time. On target and on time, as the refs say. Um, hang on. <laughs> I'm nearly there, not quite there. Because uh, I've got to change this over, because I've got echo. There you go. All right, that's done. Now, I've just got to get chat room open. Oh. How's everyone doing? Um, there we go. That one there. Jeff, good day, mate. There you go. I've got you. And Ray, hi, Kevin, hi, Michael, good day. I'll read your comments in a sec. I've just got to pop you out of the chat room. How yeah, do I do that? Pop chat, there you go. And I'll open this one up here and go back and get this one. And, oh, it's all go. Fiber Inspector from Texas. G'day, how are ya? Uh, I've just got to move you in here so I can see what I'm doing and I can see all you good people as well. That can go down there, that can go there. Just make sure my cameras are working, that's looking good. Um, all right, that's it. Let me start again. G'day, this is Steve Haywood, working masterclass. Welcome to the workshop, welcome to the bench. How is everyone? I hope you're all well in this evening, morning or afternoon, depending where in the world you are looking. So I've got Jeff, g'day, Ray, g'day. Kevin, hey Steve, Ray, Ma oh, Ray, Lane. g'day mate. Oh, I'm telling you what, I'm getting a few twitches coming over. I should have really leave a post there so people, people know, but I'm just too busy, too busy. Jeff, uh, Adelaide, your car factory is going to be a bad... Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Uh, it's old GMH plant down there. Anyway, Christopher, good morning. No, sorry, Michael. <laughs> I corrected myself, but the word was already in my throat. So Michael, welcome all the way from Adelaide. Uh, oh, da -da -da -da. Fiber inspector from Texas, good day. Reginald. Wood Expressions, hello all, g'day Frank, Ha oh, from New York, there you go, we've got it all happening today, well I've finished my breakfast, I haven't finished my coffee so I'm going to have to have that in a tick, um, got some new things that I want to try, and I was, <laughs> I was looking for a straight bit of plywood and I couldn't find it, so um, I'm, 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 I'm. we'll do that a little bit later on, what I might do first is Steve got my payout from there, oh, so went on a shopping spree, new shed and all new equipment. Oh, there you go. You got a video, Jeff. Video it so we can see. <laughs> um, what have I done? Oh, I've done a bit more on this one. So that's starting. See, I've changed these cameras around there. Yeah. That one's starting to come together. And I hadn't done the two bits there but I'll, that's all done now that's out of the way i want to start working on the the base for this one and oh this one which we started a while back i've got around to working on getting that one finished and i don't know if you can remember but i had very thin um i had some ebony that i'd put wait one wait one oh just go and have a squeeze. So I'll put a lot of bits out here if I can find it really easily. There you go. I shall show you. I don't know if you remember, because it was a while back. It was not as long back as the music stand, but it was a while ago. I um, put ebony edging on it, and then I put some Chilean... Is it doing that one? Okay. Put some chili and myrtle on it. Now that's how it comes up. You get this really nice fine pinstripe all the way around, which just gives it just a little bit of pizzazz. Just a tad of pizzazz. So that, oh, look at that. Look at that. I might be able to use this. Oh, bonus, 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 bonus. I'm looking everywhere for um, 
a piece of plywood that is dead flat and that was some of my bench the whole time. Uh, so yeah, I want to cut up a plinth and maybe start working on the plinth for this one. We get around to it. Going to have a bit of a Nobex day today. Nobex. Uh, where's their gear? They make some extraordinary gear. It's, 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 it's off the wall stuff. It's stuff that you sort of don't think much about. But I got in it on the weekend and I think I owe it to them. And no, I don't know anyone at Nobex. I'm not getting paid by Nobex. But if anyone from Nobex is watching, I'm happy to look at a sponsorship deal. Uh, we'll be using these. It's a polygon uh, clamp. I'll actually, because I've got a bit of practice with it on the weekend, I'll use this, which is a uh, Nobex angle finder. So that's Nobex, that's Nobex. And also the handsaw, which is over there, which I'll bring up a little later, but I want to have a crack at a seven-sided box. I went online just before uh, I went live, actually. No seven-sided boxes. There's some cardboard ones, but there was no wooden ones. There was one that had, uh, it looked as if it had been photoshopped, so I'm a bit sus. But seven-sided boxes, you you look at them, you know, oh, six, no, it's not six sided, it's got to be eight sided. And your brain doesn't register seven sided. So there you go. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, Ray, now that you mentioned the music, <laughs> to you too, my friend. Uh, Ray, what is that? He made them for two that did the, the turning and kept bugging his head. No, no, I haven't. That nah, music stand for Susie. I said to her the other day about the bed. I, I said, I've got a great idea for the tail, uh, the, the head and the bed, the head and the foot of the bed. Why don't we put embroideries and then put a mosaic of um, glass frames around it? Oh, she said, that'd be great. I said, you could do Japanese stuff. Yeah, she said, I've got to finish that Japanese quilt because she's made this massive Japanese quilt to go on this super king size bed. And she said, oh, I haven't got around to making that. I said, yeah, I, I know. That's why I haven't made the bed yet. <laughs> and she hit me. She hit me, she did. But I, th I think I might ask for that. Uh, yeah, no, bonbon table is going to get done. I'm just waiting for my new lathe to arrive, whenever that's going to be. Might have it this week. If I get my new lathe this week, uh, we're going to be doing, Theo and I do a stream on Friday. This coming Friday. If I haven't got it, I'm just going to have to wait until I get it. So there you go. It's out of my hands at the moment. Hey, CS, how are you? Ahoy back at you as well. Fair weather and tight sails and good sailing. Um, the one with the finials. Oh, that's that's finished. You have the little wall-mounted one. Rick B, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the shed again. Love to have you. Um, I didn't know you went there. There you go. Yeah, there, 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 there. there. Ah, all right. So, oh, this is this is this is what Susie did it, and a snow leopard, and we're going to actually inlay that into the top of the seven-sided box, and I want to do a real schmick. Um, border around it using all these wine but let me just get rid of this I don't need that for the moment I'll do that in a minute yeah using all these wine bits that I've cut off and borne your veneer and we'll sort of join it all together in a fashion so you might even do that now eh? and then um I'll cut it on the scroll saw. This is just really ad hoc. Let's see what other bits I've got there. I've got all these nice bits. <whistles> I 
Yes, we're watching, watching a lot of David Attenborough documentaries over the weekend, so we, we got into the, the wild animal stuff. Um, actually, that's going the wrong way because I want it all. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just trying to work out which is up and which is down. Okay, that okay. So we've got to do that way. <clears throat> so this is a, a new, I don't know, just a new bit of fun. I thought I would do that might be different. And as I said, seven-sided box, yeah, of all camps. Seven-sided box, which again is different. La diddy dum ba da bum. And I'm making this up as I go, if you haven't figured it out. What I'm going to do, once I've done this, I'm going to tape it all together. And then I'm going to cut it out. There you go. How about that? You see that? You can't see that. Wait a minute. I'll give you an overhead shot. Oh. Here you go. That's pretty cool. And we're going to put that in a seven-sided box. So what I've discovered is I don't know what the angle is on a seven-sided box. And I don't care because I don't need to know. But if you wanted to know, it's 64 and a half degrees. And that's only I found out because I did that backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's got six bits. One, two, three, four, five, six. Doesn't matter. Um, what have we got? It's, it's great if you can use bits that normally I'd throw all these bits away. Well, except that that's Am it's Ambonia and I most likely wouldn't. There you go. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. So I think I'll tape that together. This is a little out of sequence because I've just got sidetracked. But it's all right. Stick with me. We'll get it done. I'll, after this, I'll show you. I don't know. So I know some of you watched the um, making of the edge banding last week. And yes, for those that wondered what happened to last week's stream, I'm on chemical septic and my treatment station stopped working. And yeah, it was a little bit, little bit horrible and very much smelly. And I spent three hours shoveling, you know what, literally, to get to where the problem was, and we got it fixed. And by the time I'd finished that, I really didn't feel like streaming. And if it was smell -o vision you wouldn't have wanted me to stream, I tell you. <laughs> Susie actually wanted to throw my clothes into the... Um, Dumpster. <laughs> I'm not washing those. They're wrong. Okay. Now, I wonder. I know what I wanted to do, but that's not going to work. So what I will do is that... Mm. Okay. I 
All right. Oh, no, what I want to do will work. That's all right, because I've got that there, that there, that there. All right. Okay, do that in a little bit. We'll revisit that. Right now, I'd like to show you what was the outcome <coughs> of the edge banding that we put together last, what was it? Tuesday, Wednesday? I don't know, I can't remember. But anyway, that's what we glued together. So we've got a strip of silver ash, no, sorry, two strips of silver ash, two strips of ebony, one strip of silver ash, five mil of solid ebony, then one strip of silver ash, two strips of ebony, and two strips of silver ash on the top. So let's <coughs> plane that down and see how she came up. <coughs> Remote controls everywhere here. Don't need them all. Um, 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 um. I'm just adjusting this other camera here. This one's actually how I made this, is just about ready to be uploaded to YouTube. So that will happen very soon. I'll just add this little bit onto it. So you can see the finished article. Doesn't matter what plane, I'm using a, a number six. But you could use a number seven, you could use a five and a half. And if you've got a jointer, you can put it over a jointer. See it's starting to come through here. Let's see. No, you can't, can you? There you go. That's better. pretty. And a beautiful thing about doing edge banding this way is, and I shall show you, <coughs> you get two totally different patterns. <coughs> now that's that pattern that side, totally different pattern on the other side. What I'll do, I'll go over to the saw. You can come over with me if you like. There you go. We'll rip some up on the band saw. And then you can see the versatility of what it is we're doing. Now if you're going to saw, put it around this side. If you're going to saw, um, strips like this on the bandsaw, highly recommend you get a piece of plywood, slip it in there first and saw that, that way it won't tear out the bottom of the veneer of the edge banding that you're doing. So here goes. That's one side. Take 
I can cut off the other side. Break. I know I say that every time I use it, but it's true. I do. I like the foot brake. <coughs> there you go. So out of that one piece, we've got two totally different bits of edge banding because we're cutting from either side of the wood, so it gives you different patterns. So that's more up and down, and that's more of an angle. And that's just because of the way that the grain is on the uh, middle stock to use. But really, really great idea. Very, very easy project to do. And it's something that personalizes your work. I'll be doing some colored stuff later on, which is a bit in your face. Not today, but down the track. I'm just going to, let me just quickly go through this and then I'll, help, then I'll have a chat. I've got that, got that, got that. Got that, got that, got that. Got that. They better all be on. Yeah, no, that's good. All right. I'll just, yes, good, wonderful. Ah, all right, where are we up to? Uh, da, da, da. That's finished and it looks over at the unfinished pile. <laughs> um, Steve, the name of seven side. It's a heptagon. Well, there you go. I thought it was a septagon. Well, there you go. But are there many there? I didn't see many. Where's my remote? Control for changing camera position on my bench. Hey, Ninja, how you going? Oh, lovely to have you on board. Good to see. You. Welcome to the workshop. Something's rattling in the bandsaw. Yeah, it's got a bandsaw in it. <laughs> um, da -da -da -da. Morning, Brian. How are you? Welcome to the workshop. Lovely to have you with us again. All right, let me throw this down my neck. That's it. I've got no Bob in here today. I've got a friend down and Bob's out there running around the yard with him. One step closer. One step closer on the um, classrooms. We put a secondary gutter in yesterday, which is going to be absolutely awesome because it rained on the weekend and, yeah, we got flooded again. But all good, all good. What am I going to do? Seven-sided box. Let's start. Okay, and we'll introduce some of these. Um, it's not, another box lid. Let me get around to doing that one one day. Um, introduce some of these things. Now, this, I have used it before but it is absolutely brilliant. There you go. A friend of mine designed them. They're uh, discs, as you can tell. And they've got markings on them. This one here, you can use to make any number of sided polygon that contains two or three sides. And this one will do anything that contains multiples of five and seven sides. And then if you need to make it bigger, there are these extension bits that fit on the side. Well, if it's laying down like that, so you can go out to 20 inches. I'll show you that in this shot. There you go, they fit like that and that camera was right out of whack when I was showing you that. Was it? No, it wasn't. But I'm going to change the camera angle anyway because I'm going to bring it back here. 
this one as well. Boom, ba -dum, boom. Boom, ba -dum, boom. There we go. <clears throat> so, what size do I want? I don't think I want a four inch, I think. I think four inches is the size I did come up with. But I'll double check that. Where's this tiger eiger? Can pop him there. Slow, snow, snow, snow leopard. Not a slow leopard, a snow leopard. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. That fits there like that. And we throw that on the top. And what I'm doing is looking around here to try and get the diameter that's going to work best for me. And four inches is here. So if I look at that, I reckon everything's going to fit in there quite Nicely. I'm thinking. So if I just move that to there, that to there. That to there. Yep. All right. So I'll go four inch, seven sided box, four inches. What you do, you get this, plonk it down wherever you want, put a dot in the middle, like that, and then mark the blues of the sevens, if yellow is the five, just put a dot. I got to think that's why I'm not talking. So wherever there is a blue line, you put a dot where the four is, and then get a ruler and join the dots. Be as accurate as you can because it helps. By right, you, you, I could get away with not even drawing this whole shape, but I'm going to draw this whole shape because I actually want to get a perspex copy of it, which I shall do on the router, yeah. Now, not about you, but I reckon that is the easiest way to draw a seven-sided figure. Now, that's the sewing revolution, and I think I think if you go online, Anne still has them. I, I don't know how much they are. They used to be about forty. I'll tell you what. We'll have a look. See, I'll I'll just get online and have a. Have a squeeze. Um. <whistles> I 
Okay, what have we got? So revolution, home. Are you to be inspired? And she's got all these other, really other cool things you can do. Sewing revolution. Oh, there you go, sewing the embroidery party. Oh, we might have to have her on the show. Well, there you go. Kim's got it. And Anne also was the girl. Kim and Anne came up with it together. So the sewing revolution. You can buy them online, apparently. Where am I? I'm coming back here. There you go. Restore chat. Yes, I want chat as well. Bring it back. <sighs> About $70. Well, thank you very much for that. Oh, you finally get a notification. That's good, Ninja. Oh, see, we've been missing you. We've been missing you. What prompted the move from Twitch? Um, mainly because I've got a... Uh, a good base on YouTube and I was putting videos on YouTube anyway. Um, I thought it made sense and I'm doing all, all the one thing. I don't get the bigger following. No disrespect to all you got people out there, but you know, I'd end up with uh, 3,000, 3,500 people in the chat room on Twitch, but they weren't that interested in woodwork. I think it was more a question of they just wanted to watch what I was doing. And um, the, yeah, the, the financial aspect of it, YouTube is much better. And I had a lot of problems um, communicating with Twitch, I suppose. And not only that, to me, it, it's much easier to keep it all in the one basket. It's YouTube. I don't have to change the settings all the time, whereas because I go through IBS, if I was streaming on YouTube or doing something on YouTube, I'd have to change my settings and then I'd come back and I'd have to change them back to the Twitch settings and I was just, yeah, and restream. If I go restream, I don't get paid by YouTube and, you know, all sorts of things. So that's the reason I'm with YouTube and I'd love to get the following on YouTube, hint, hint, that I was getting on uh, Twitch. And I know, it's still good. I don't know, 10, 8,000, 10,000 people wanting to watch me still on Twitch, but I, I haven't been back. I should put a notice on there that I'm not doing Twitch anymore. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two angles. I'm going to cut up here and down here, or it doesn't matter which two. I might do this one and this one. And I'll show you nifty way of finding angles and setting the saw up. It's really quite intriguing. You don't need to see me do this because I'm just going to, actually I might use this bandsaw over here. Isn't it nice to have all these bandsaws in here? Anthony wants his bandsaw back though, so I've got to, I've got to take his bandsaw back to him soon. I've cut just those two angles there. And what I'm going to do now is plane down to that line. So we might, well, we might as well leave it on this camera so you can see. Doesn't matter what you use. Use a three, use a blocky, I'll use a five and a quarter because it's what I grabbed. And just plane right down to that line, which I think I've done. I might use the blocky just to trim that up a smidgen. A little bit fat on one side. Okay. 
And you can't say, oh, I'm sorry. So I've planed down to the, plane down to the line there. Now I'm just going to plane this one down as well. Okay, so that's playing down to there, that's playing down to there. Now what I want to do is set up my table saw so I can get this angle here so we can join the box together. This is where this thing comes in, it's awesome. It's been hanging up on my wall and people have commented on it uh, for months. And what is it? What is it? How do you use it? Well, here it is. He <laughs> said, here it is and he can't find it. What a bullet. Here we go. Here we go. Drum roll. Nobex angle finder. How cool is that? Let me spin this around here. I'll do it again. There you go. Is that better? No. Novax Angle Finder. That's it there. And it, it looks complicated. Very, very easy to use. Though. Undo this here. That does that. Get the angle you want to find. and push it into there. Got to do, got to do this two-handed. By like that. Now this, this is a bit I love. So you got that there, lock it off. It's better if you've got a thicker bit of timber. Lock it off. There you have it. Now this is the magic. That comes out from there. I'll do it to you again. That pulls out from there. That separates. That doesn't matter. This bit here, you go over to your saw, which we will do right now. And if you're using a mitre box, Loosen the mitre box off. And line it up. Where are we going on the picture? Put one edge against your mitre box, slide it up to your saw, and then you just make it parallel to your saw, like so. And that's it. I don't know what that angle is. I don't care what that angle is. But what we'll do, we'll cut a bit. Find 
rather thin bit of air. Yeah, that's all there. Rip this on the band saw what's next to me. And you come back to this side, which is that one. And there you have the perfect angles you need. So if you put it that way, you've also got that angle. Now the other thing I love is once I've got this here, obviously if I'm making a box, I want thicker sides. So it's got to be thicker than this. I might um, num, 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 num. find a bit of. Oh, there's a bit of timber flat. What's this? Oh, Bob. Bob's been chewing on that bit. All right. We'll take this bit and we'll cut that so we can join together as if it was a box. So let's go back over the saw. So I can't cut it this way because it's going to be too flat. I want the angle this way. So you could cut it like that. And if your saw blade's big enough, that's fine. If not, and you've got a tilting table, what you do... Crank it up to whatever height you want. Then using this bit of stock you've cut before pop that against there and just tweak it till it seems about right it's pretty good. Then you can bring your miter box back to the 90 degree. Rip this bit on the dance floor as well. And there you have it. Well, if, if you didn't have a bit of Bob Jude, that's your side for a seven sided box. How easy is that? I reckon that's just got to be one of the best bits of gear that I've, and I've had it for ages, but I've, I've never really understood how to use it. Then all you do to put it back together is, there you go. Clip that under there. That goes over there. Yeah, wrong way around. Clip that under there, that goes under there. Then this bit just clips back in there. Put those down, or you can put them this way if you want. 
Put it back on the wall. There you go. What's it called? Multifix. Novex Multifix Angle Finder. Fantastic bit of kit. I'm, I'm wrapped and it's really pushed me now. I want to do uh, a lot of different <laughs> sorts of boxes. So we'll get going on this seven side of one. In a tick, what's happening in the, oh, in the room. Oh dear, oh dear. Pascal, welcome, good morning to you too. Yeah, look, it was less less stuffing around too, Jeff. There you go. Um, hang on, let me see where are we up to. If they don't come over from Twitch, they haven't been too interested in following your. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Brian. So I decided to do more handwork aside from my violence. I'm working on chair. Oh, mate, chairs. They are the. They are. I reckon one of the most. Challenging, rewarding, and frustrating things to make. I love chairs. I, I've quite happily been a chair maker, I think. In fact, um, one of my cars I had was a, actually a 5 Series BMW. And the number plate on that was chairs. And I went into business with um, somebody else, and we were going to get signage out the front of the factory. I said, no, I said, just go and get the number plate tables and then we'll get a sign up made with the and sign and we'll park both, both our cars out of the front of the factory and it'll have tables and chairs. But no, it didn't happen. Anyway, that was fun. No, I do. I love making chairs. They're very challenging. Um, oh, this is, and I've shown you this many times before, this is another form of edge banding you can do if you really want to test yourself, they're all done with 0.6, yeah, where are we going here? They're all done with 0.6 of a mil pieces of veneer and it's all done individually. And I think there was maybe two or three days work in that. So I, I use it sparingly, I use it sparingly. Oh, all right, well, I think I'll go ahead and cut this out so I've got the size that I want. Uh, for that, I'll go back over the table saw and I don't, I don't know if I've, I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but hang in there with me. We'll get it. We'll get it sorted. We'll get it sorted. I'll just put this up. Uh, La -dum, da -da -bum. I know what I prefer to do, I prefer to just go to the bands or do it. We'll see how that goes. I, I make no promises. Actually, what I will do is I'll 
cut a lot of the waste off. There you go. That gets rid of a lot of the problem. I don't know how this will go. Let's give it a. <laughs> Someone said to me, hey, Do you practice everything you do before you stream? I said, No! Nah. What happens, happens. Ah, I couldn't handle it. That's the real world, isn't it? So I don't like that because it's, I've got no, there we go, a bit that. Well, I think that's going to be pretty close. And when you're trying something new for the first time, pretty close is generally good enough for your first attempt, I think. Okay, where are we up to? Let's see how we go. No, it's wobbling too much. This is all I want to take it with that. I'll do the rest with the hand plane, I think. Because it's just, there's too much movement as I'm um, pushing the mitre box forward, I can feel it's swaying a little bit. Which isn't ideal. I'm not sure. But I, well, the last time I heard it was happening, um, tomorrow, uh, Christian from Japanese Tools Australia is going to pop in. Now, if he does, I'll definitely be doing a stream with him tomorrow. But last time I was speaking to him, yeah, it was on. He's just finished his uh, a wood show 
oh, a couple of hundred k's away from me um, at a place called Mullaney. And he's packing up today and he was going to call in tomorrow on the way home. So, as I said, if he does, that's terrific. Um, we can ask him some questions and hopefully he's going to demonstrate some of the wonderful Japanese tools that he has. Okay. Now the acid test. We'll see, we'll see how good it is. Oh. Sheet of paper. There you go. I didn't realise I whistled as much. And then when I started um, doing the editing, yeah, I whistle a lot. Must mean I'm happy. Or trying to be happy, one or the other. Okay, so we'll mark that as one. We'll have this one there. So I've drawn that. There, we'll get a biro, if it works, which it does. We'll spin that around so it doesn't matter. I'll put that there. And we'll just see how accurate this is by drawing a pencil, a uh, pen line over the pencil line. And if there's any glaring gaps, we know we're out, but if it pretty well covers the pencil line, we're pretty right. So I reckon we're pretty right there. That one, that way. There you go. All right, so, yep, happy with it. Might be a smidge now, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. So now what I want to do is make a Perspex copy of that. And that then helps me when I come to laying out the design for the roof or the lid, I've got a copy, but it's clear. So I can lay that over the design and see how close we are. I'll just go and rip that on the bandsaw and I will be back. Going close to the line, but not on the line. Have to take my word for this. Hokey dokey. So that's it. Cut. Now I've got a double-sided tape. Um, no, actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a plywood 
copy of this. Yeah, we're going over the router. Hey, whoa, hang in there. Fun. Uh, get a bit of quarter inch ply. So I like cutting stuff out with three mil ply to start with. Oh, sorry, um, three mil MDF because I can shape it a lot easier. But if it gets wet, it's hopeless. So, all right, back over the scroll saw, bah, scroll saw, band saw. Here you go. I'll take you over there this time so you can see I'm doing something. And we'll cut that up. Should put the dusty on, shouldn't I? I'm cutting these on the line because I made the line a bit fatter. When I drew the template. There we go. Now, double-sided tape. Bum, bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum. Now, put that on this part. Bit the middle for luck. <laughs> What's happened? Who's talking? Snakes, spiders, and snakes. Jim Stafford. <laughs> Randall, good night, mate. How are you? Oh, where are we going? Do you love the hand? Do you love? Oh yeah, mate, I do. It's just, it's a joy to use. My only regret, that's what Brian's referring to. NX60. They don't make them anymore. I just wish it had stayed shinier longer. But no, it's, it's beautiful. It's got a really nice little weight to it, which with, with hand planes is good. You've got a nice heavy hand plane you find you don't have to work as hard because you got the mass in the plane that really assists with what you're doing. All right. And we'll put that on there, make sure we've got a bit of overage all the way around, which I do. Pop it in the vise. That just tightens it up and makes sure all the contact contacts. All right, shall we? Shall we do it? Are you ready, Ray? Are they all on standby? I'm going over to the router. Here we go. Which one have we got? That one. Okay, let's go to the router. I'm going to put some eye muffs on. Get me eye muffs. Yeah, George, give me a plug, mate. Eye muffs. They, they are, oh, they really are good. Okay, let's go over to the router. What, what am I taking my phone for? Oh! 
Hey, look at that. It's about 15 bucks worth of ebony shavings there. Look at it. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Actually, I want to keep those because um, I, I want to keep them. That's all. I might find someone that does casting and they can re <laughs> reconstitute ebony. Look at that. Oh, I'll tell you, no, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in a smoker. And um, then, there's got a bit of something in there. Then we can smoke sausages with ebony. Hey, how's that? And then it will start a trend with the rich and famous and they'll all want to do it. Oh, okie dokie. Let's just drop this down. Fingers, we're off. Daggy bits with a knife. Clean that off. Now, that wasn't too scary, was it? Oh, hang on, no, I've got to go back and do that bit. Was nearly good, nearly good. Hang on, I'll take you back. Bear with me. for a tick. Okay. Now I wouldn't normally do this for every box I make but I think this is something I'm going to make a few of, only because they're different. And I haven't, as I said, I, I've never seen one. Now this is going to be my main template that will do most of the work. This one I'll put aside and keep that so if this template ever gets ruined, well I've got a template to make another template. Take the glue off. There you go. I'll write on there what it is. 
Gee, I've got a texter. Texter would be better. No, I don't have a texter. It's all right. We'll just use this. So it's four inch seven side. And I'll put the date, <coughs> which is 6th of May 2019. And we'll put live stream. There you go, so we can revisit it. I like doing things like that. You, you mark them, you make a tool or something or other, and you write it on it. Years later, you pick it up and you, I did that 18 years ago. Can't remember doing it, but I did do it 18 years ago. All right. Now, this has got a little bit of round corners, but that's really not going to matter. Same, same. Put tape on this template. Now, there's another reason I like using uh, plywood as a template, apart from the fact it maintains its form. It also is thicker, and I don't know if you noticed, but when I was doing that last bit of routing, uh, there was very thin, wafer-thin bits left on this template here. And that's because there's very little contact between the MDF template and the bearing. In fact, I was right on the edge of the bearing because if you have a look at the router bit, it's got a bearing, then a space, then the top of the cutter. And sometimes, particularly with that thin MDF, you can slide between the bearing and the cutter, which makes a bit of a mess of your job. Or you can slide right off the bearing and if you're not careful it can dig in and give you a bit of a fright as we here in Australia used to say give you a bit of a Kimby's moment for those of you who can remember Kimby's all right now we're putting this onto there don't forget this is a perspex one and I'm going to do a lot of work with that. So pop it in the vise. Give it a tighten up all the way around to make sure that glue holds. Oh, all right, let's see. Awesome camera angles. Are you being facetious, Ray? Don't like you. Oh, that's right, Randall. You got the day off, haven't you? You lucky sausage. You went to Mulaney and Lost Street. Did you go on your bike? How are you feeling? Can you walk now? Gee, mate, that was a big effort. Mulaney and Toowoomba. Uh, only one has the project in the picture. Just <laughs> hi, Randall. Hi, Bob. Hello, Brian. Rob. Um, I'm good. I used to have my own furniture making company many minutes ago, but I'm thinking, mate, do it, do it. Then, then there'll be two of us. No, <laughs> no there's a few around. Look, I, I do it. People say, what do you do in your spare time? I do exactly the same in my spare time, that I, not that I have any spare time, than I do when I'm working or doing this. It doesn't matter. To me, it's, it's what I live for. I just love it. Um, yeah, if you wanted to punish me, Take my timber away, take my tools away, and ah, it'll be the worst thing. Okay. How can you be down under up top? Melbourne's down under rental. <laughs> yeah, you're close enough. I would love to visit Australia, but I'm scared of spiders and snakes and kangaroos. Spiders and snakes, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Uh, Roos are harmless unless you're in Canberra. Oh, yeah, Roo will open you up. You get close enough, you get that middle. Anyway. Oh, well, I, hopefully, I've, I've got something in the pipeline, which I can't say at the moment, but if it comes off, oh, it's going to be absolutely awesome. Well, I can tell you a little bit about it, but um, not the details. What I want to do is, have I kicked that camera again? No, that's all right. Um, what I want to do is, is oh, I don't know, 
bit of a documentary because my real love, I, I mean, I love doing this. No, you know, I love uh, doing the camera work and I love doing the editing. I, I like creating documentaries and I like doing, obviously, the, the YouTube videos because it's unfortunate. It's, it's too... One passion came out of the other. Woodworks has been a passion for mine for, I don't know, a long time, 40 years. And videoing came as a result of the TV show that I had, what was that, seven or eight years ago. And so the two dovetail nicely together. But what I want to do, and this is, this is exciting, I want to go out and I've called it a wilderness workshop. I want to go out in the bush, one of the cocky's properties that I go to to get timber, right out in the middle of the sticks. You wake up and there are, there are kangaroos around your tent site and there are emus trying to knock your food off and there's wild pigs running around and rabbits. And thankfully I haven't seen any snakes, but yeah, if you see a snake, leave him alone. But what I want to do is go out to the bush, the Australian bush, and we're gonna, this is the, what do they, what do they call that when you put it together? The brief, this is the brief. We'll go out there with tools, uh, possibly a lathe, the bandsaw, some hand tools, a sander and whatever else we can lay our hands on, and chainsaws, and go out and cut timber green and actually work it and make stuff and then the culmination of the end of the day's work or the end of the two days' work is we'll sit down and we'll, we won't be able to have a campfire because uh, you've got to respect the cockies and not have fire on their properties because, you know, vegetation so hard to come by. But we'll sit down with an evening meal and we will actually eat and cook the meal using the utensils and bowls and whatever it is we come up with that we made whilst we're actually out in the bush. That's one thing, if, if um, Christian does come on tomorrow, I'm going to get him to make me a pair of ebony chopsticks. There you go, ebony chopsticks. All right, let's go over to the router again. Oh, thanks, David. And welcome to the workshop and the workbench, my friend. Just hook in. If you ever want to know anything about woodwork, I'm not saying I've got all the answers, but by all means ask me and I'll stop mid whatever I'm doing, if I can, and try and give you the best answer to my ability. And there's possibly much better answers out there, but I can't answer for other people. I can only tell you my experiences. Um, ah, kangaroos vicious. They have been known to be, yes. I, if you ever... I remember many, many, many years ago, we were at a, an animal sanctuary. It was, um, I only had one son, so yeah, it would have been at least 40 years ago. Um, and there was this kangaroo in the shade, big old buck. And I went over, because oh, I thought, oh, you can pat them and he growls. And believe me, if a kangaroo growls at you, you back off real quick. You know he's not happy. Oh! Speaking of which, here you go, this one, make it toss your cookies. I had, those of you that can remember, the, the sawdust on the glue fiasco. I had another glue pot which is outside of the moat. It putrefied. It stunk. Oh, it was rotten. Anyway, it had about that much glue in it. So I left it soak overnight, which was yesterday. And this morning I got a knife and it had all gone black with the iron in the glue pot and pulled it out and oh, it, was, it was horrible. It just ponged. No bob in sight. I flicked it out on the ground and he came like a white missile from somewhere. <laughs> just as it. Oh, oh, to have the metabolism of a dog. Um... Uh, you'll have a hard time on me getting one in there. Mm. I saw, I, I saw, oh, <laughs> I thought you were doing a Caesar on me. I came, I saw, I conquered. I read that red line. I said, I saw, I drove, I got back. Okay, I'm sore, I drove because I knew the weather in Toowoomba would be wet. Took the chief. Oh, yeah, you can't take her on the back of the bike. Um, down under, oh, well, thanks. Thanks for that, Randall. I got that. But down under, that's got to be Melbourne. Because we're not top end. For those of you who don't know, top end is Northern Territory. And then you've got the South Island. And I, when I was speaking, I was on the professional speaking circuit 
doing the corporate thing. Can you imagine me in a suit and tie? True, used to happen. And I was doing a couple of conferences down in Tasmania and I referred to Australia as the North Island and they loved it because most people go down there and if you're in Tasmania and you're a Tasmanian, they do not like being referred to as Australia being the mainland because they feel that ostracises them. Bob's going off about something. All right, uh, where we go? Oh, uh, I've been off the tools for 15 years, but I'm getting about Mate, get back on them. It's the best thing you can do. Good for your health, good for your wealth, good for your mental well-being. Uh, I'd like to be a part. Oh, there you go. All right, well, I'll let you know how it goes, Randall. I've just got some feelers out at the moment. But, uh, yeah, Wilderness Workshop, I just, I think it'll be great. I really will. I got invited by Terry, um, H&T Gordon, uh, to go, I think it was this week, I was meant to go out to Burke and uh, grab some timber. But, oh, I couldn't do it. It was two days driving out there, three days on the chainsaws and two days driving home. It would take me two months to get over it. Well, I, I don't know. G'day, Stephen, how are you? Welcome along. Um, yeah, I don't know if it would be open to, to come as well. I tell you what, we should... Um, I, look, I reckon there is value in running tours like that. Take it if you've got wood turners. All right, it doesn't matter what level they're at. Get in a bus or whatever and go to a property and cut some timber. and you, You'll find timber out there you won't find in the sheds in the uh, timber shops. Definitely timber you won't find in Bunnings. But um, yeah, this particular property I go to, it's where I get, it's, it's wonderful because it's, I work in the, the, little, the little paddock up the front. Yes, it's only two and a half thousand acres. That's a small paddock. I think they've got over 340,000 acres or something. But there's one portion and all there is is beef wood. Another portion is cypress pine. Another portion is uh, yellow box. Another portion is iron bark. And there's no cross-pollination. It's really, really weird. It's as if, you know, someone laid a garden out, but obviously they didn't. It's just the birds eat seed. Oh, there we go. The dog, the, the, the glue muncher has decided to pay me a visit. You stinky thing. You coming in? You're going to come in and be famous? Oh, you're not sleeping with me tonight, you stink pot. Oh, all right. Let's go over to the router. I'm going to router this. You don't want me in the corner. There you go. Oh, all right. Now with this, I've got more contact. I can drop this down so I've got more contact with the bearing, which is exactly what I want. And we'll just put that on lock. And that's good there, that's good there. We'll turn this on. You've got to be careful doing this with Perspex because sometimes it shatters. So we will see. Putrid glue muncher. What do you reckon, Bob? Was that no? Are you going to belly out yet? Hey, oh, oh, the tail's going. Oh, people are talking to me. I'm happy. Excuse me, mate. There you go. That was really. I had a brain moment then, not a brainy moment, but a brain moment, which, which I alluded to earlier. When you look at a seven-sided box, you think, "Oh, that's six sides." Yeah, hang on. No, it's not. It might be eight sides. When I was doing that on the router, I said, oh, I've, I've done all six sides. Hang on, I've got a spare one. I'm making it, and I forgot. There, that happens. Oh, okay. Let's see. 
Ah. I'm wishing I had my own workshop. Mate, I go and have a look at the early videos I had in room for woodwork. You don't need much space. You need, do need to have a tolerant wife. So just be nice to the missus. Okay. Now, clean this off. Now what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do a dummy one, which is just out of uh, plywood. And then once I've got it worked out, if the dummy one works, see, there you go, look at that. You idiot, use the right camera. There you go. And now, for example, when I'm working this out, this is where it comes in nice and handy. You pop that there, then you plonk that on, and then you can position it, and you can see exactly what's going to be on the box, what's going to be off the box and everything else. Now what I'm going to do, because that's different. Okay, obviously if I'm going to put hinges on this box, which I'm thinking of doing, it has to be on a flat bit. This is pointy up here, so what I might do is I'm going to turn that around and move that about. And that looks quite acceptable. I'll move this bit up here a bit. This is the beauty of it. You can then modify what you're doing to fit what it is you're making. Okay. So that's how that would sit in there. The hinges will go here. So this is going to be the front of the box. Now bearing in mind I am going to lose quite a bit of edging because this has got to go inside. We'll cut um, a rebate in the box to fit this in. This will go on a piece of plywood which will be veneered on the other side and then there'll be a bit of two mil glass going into there. So the Side of the boxes, let's see what size boxes I'm going to do. All right, so if I do it out of this material here, which I might just do a dummy run on that, I've got to bring this bit of, and I'm learning as I go, so don't think I'm clever because my, my mind is going 100 miles an hour at the moment. Trying to figure this out. Okay, this bit here. If I want to keep that bit, which I think I do. That's got to come down in there somehow. Put that on there. It can go there. Okay, I think that'll work. I'll bring this one in a bit. There you go, like that. And the beautiful thing, a friend of mine, Graham Priddle, if you have a look at, um, look, just look it up online, Graham Priddle wood turning or Graham Pr Priddle work. He does the most amazing stuff. <laughs> And I had the privilege one day of filming one of his workshops and his big thing was symmetry is evil. So ever since then, I've been trying to get away from having things that are symmetrical. But now that looks quite, quite nice, I think. All right. So now we'll cut up some strips of that and we will see if we can get the right sizes. 
happening. If we do, we're in front, and if we don't, that's all right. We'll just start again, do it again. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where are we up to? Everyone's having a chat now. I have to be honest, I'm not familiar with Australian timbers, but I imagine you have... Yeah, look, there are, it's really funny you should say that, uh, Rob, because I look at American timbers and go, oh, gee, I love that stuff. Oh, the walnut, Cara walnut. Oh, cherry, maple. Oh, you give me some rock maple. Oh, that's nice, Bavona. Oh, wonderful stuff. And then you look at South Africa and South America. But a lot of people come here and see the Australian timbers and go, oh, that's awesome. Oh, I love it. So I guess we're just not happy. But I, I am blessed. I really am. Look at that. You couldn't see this. <laughs> oh, now he knows he's been. Now he knows I'm having a go at him. Yeah, poor old thing. Mm, you're a good boy. There you go. I'm blessed because I've got so many timbers to choose from, but I've been collecting timber for nearly 30 years, I suppose. And a lot of the stuff I've got now, you just can't get anymore because uh, they've shut the leases down or it's on the, what's that, uh, site list, is it? Site, cited or something or other. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just using it, Stephen, the old Lambo. Um, some of the timber Steve has mentioned are especially hard. Yeah. Steve would love to use Jarrah, but very hard to come by in Queensland. Mostly, oh, no, not strictly true. I've got half a cube of it. Um, some of the boards are 400 wide and six metres long, so I'm doing all right with Jarrah. I tell you what I do like with Jarrah is a tiger stripe when you get that black fleck going through it. It's, it's awesome. But at the moment, I'm in an ebony and amboyna phase, only because I've got access to a nice, a nice supply of ebony. Oh, nice. G'day, Steve. Hope you're doing well, mate. Bingo, dingo. Mate, I'm on top of the world. Richie did fair dinkum, no bull of canker. For everyone that didn't understand that, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh... Do they have wild growth? Yeah, look, some of the stuff is all over the place. It's uh, lovely, but as he, Terry, Terry Gordon from h &T Gordon Plains, he is a classic. He, we go out, as I mentioned, we go out um, collecting timber together, him and, a, and Trent who makes my chisels and a couple of other guys. Oh, Theo comes out with us sometimes. And you'd be driving through the bush. I mean, there's trees either side of you, right? Just bush everywhere. And... There we go, yeah, I think we'll have that one. Which one? That one over there. What? What? I mean, there's hundreds of trees, but he's seen one. And I'll go, what about that one? It could be half a kilometre away. Or, you know, what's that? A quarter of a mile away. No, it's no good, it's got a twist in it. And I remember we were, <laughs> we were out. We were out one year, and we found this particularly nice stand of trees. And uh, he said, oh, we'll have that one. I said, well, what's wrong with that? He says, it's got a... It, now what is it? It's got a pipe up the middle of it, which is where insects get inside and they eat the core or the, the heart of the tree out. So you've got the heart wood, but the main centre of the tree, which is a bit softer, the bugs eat it out. He said, no, oh, it's got a pipe up. I said, how do you know that? And he said, I'm telling you, it's got a pipe up. Said, how do you know that? And he got the chainsaw. <laughs> See, told you it's got a pipe up it. So I never doubted him from that day on. And though we didn't leave there, I got in there and took some nice bits off it. So there you go. Um, no, you can buy, you, yeah, you can buy a Jarrah from Bunnings over here too, Ray. Uh, mainly, it's mainly in flooring. You had enough, Bob. You, hang on. My dog wants to leave. It's all too hard. Oh dear, oh dear, there's no food here. What's the point of living? Oh, must be getting cold the other morning. <laughs> Woke me up at four o'clock in the morning with a wet nose. What? Oh, he hopped up on the bed. 
and they wriggle on the, oh. So I had to put the quilt out of the top of it and then he snuggled up and went to sleep. Spoiled, spoiled. Oh dear. Um, so I would have thought that Bunnings on the, yeah, they do, I said that. Jeff, can only be trusted. Oh, not true, Jeff. <laughs> Um, actually, I don't, I don't think I've got a, I might have a stick of radiata, but it would have been, there was um, a hardware shop over here that opened in conjunction or tried competition with Bunnings called Masters. And uh, yeah, they were pretty good for a while. They, they sponsored me and it was great. I just, <laughs> it used to make me laugh. I'd go in there and say, oh, can you open your boot? I said, mate, what are you, what are you seeing if I'm pinching any stuff for you? Give it to me for nothing. Oh, fair enough. But yeah, I was doing some projects for them. Wine racks and fishing rod holders and horse saddle stands. And that was in Radiata. But as a rule, apart from starting a fire, I don't really like Radiata. Um, Jerry, simply from Western Australia, I'm not totally sure of the grain of some of those timbers. Oh, look, it's pretty, it's pretty ordinary grain, but the redness is a really nice... Crimson, yeah, I've got a bit, of, I just, I don't know, let me have a look, see. Oh, that's well, most likely cedar, I think. No, I did have some jarrah here, where's that jarrah box gone? Body, do you, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Tip all that rubbish out. Oh, and that's, uh, box that was done Whoa! ages ago. We still all working or did I break something? Oh dear, oh dear. There you go. That's Jarrah and the black stuff is Wenge. And then I've got, is it one colour or two colour? No, I think it's only one colour is that the stripe of red veneer in there and then that was, that was just a, a piece for Students, so they could play around and make some stuff. But yeah, actually, Jarrah, I use. Oh, actually, there you go. That's Jarrah. That's Jarrah. See, it's pretty ordinary. Um, give me a bit of colour. But it does have. It does have a nice colour to it, which is what I like. And then you get this other stuff called Tiger Stripe, and it's got really strong black flecks. It looks like someone's put ink drops in it. And it's, it's very nice. Whoops, just dropped that on my phone. What have I got here? Uh, da -da, had to go to work, so. Oh, I, just got a, I just got a message, wait a minute. Oh. Oh, well, whatever. It, makes, it amuses me. That was somebody text last night at 8 o'clock. Can you come around and do this? Can you? Oh, we really need this fixed. Yeah, no worries. So I said, I'll be around at 1.30. Now it's, oh, no, we're busy. Can you come next weekend? Well, yeah, whatever. Who cares? All right. Now, what am I going to do? I've, I've, I've lost the plot. Oh, I'll finish reading this. Um... Jerry is typically from Australia. I'm not totally sure of the grain of some of these timbers. Gidge is almost as hard as steel and dark in colour. Well, these planes are gidge. That's what um, ah, Terry uses. And that's what I was going to go at the Burke and cut. This stuff here. That's gidgey. Very, very hard, very heavy. But at the same time, very stable. Very nice. Ah. Oh. Oh, where are we up to? Oh, da -da, da -da, da -da. I'll get you in a minute, Tango. I just saw you slipped in. I'm catching up. Um, dear, oh dear. Uh, where we are in a single wide mobile home and a trailer, I look at real estate sites, of homes, unfinished basements. So, 
I just get a little. Look, if you could get a, a table, three foot by two foot, you could make stuff. There are things, there are vices you can get, a Zeiss vice. It screws on and you can work on that. It's amazing what you can do. I had one chap, he lived um, in the back of his car. And from watching me doing room for woodwork, he said, oh, this is awesome. And he started fitting out the back of his car. They might have been using the tailgate as a, a bench. So it's all possible. And it's good to dream. It's good to dream. Uh, never give up, Stephen. That's the best thing. Never give up. Jeff, I think you just wore that stuff. <laughs> Oh dear. I have nowhere to work other than waiting for nice weather and working outside, living in Newcastle in England. Well, at least you do get the opportunity to work. But the good thing is when you can't work outside, you can sit and you can plan and you can doodle and you can imagine. And the amount of things I make in my head before I come down here and realise they don't work, if you've got time to think, you can analyse that in your head and realise it won't work before you go to the effort of trying to do it. Uh... No, actually, it's, it's funny, Jerry. It, it works really well. It planes beautifully. And, yeah, you get lovely curly shavings off it. It's, it's well behaved. The uh, equivalent over here in the West is red mahogany or swamp mahogany. And if you want to know why it's called swamp mahogany, start working it. And you won't have to really wonder for much longer because it stinks. Mm. Um. Yeah, cowrie's pretty, pretty big over here. They, oh, and that's that, uh, what's that other stuff that comes from Western Australia, right? Ma Maori, Maori, Maori wood or something. It's yellow timber. There, it's all the rage. The trouble is with all these hardwoods that are becoming all the rage is because all the good timbers have gone, which is sad. Uh... Well, there was a bit. I was in. I was in the shop rental. Um, a little while ago with Theo, and I think you had a stick of wenge in there or something or other. It was 240 bucks. Do you get a free thickness of that? <laughs> dear, oh dear. Uh, how is Jarrah for hand cutting and plow? Oh, hang on, I'll go and get some. Wait a minute, I'll see if I can find some. Oh, hang about a bit. Oh, talk amongst yourselves. I'll just go next door to me timber shop. First bit I could grab. Oh, all right. It doesn't doesn't look all that special like that, so I'll just cut a bit off and I'll play with it. Oh, it's heavy. I'll tell you that much. Definitely heavy. Okay. All right. What do we do? I'll flatten. Yeah, I'll flatten one side of it. Oh, 
I've got to get on to make me seven-sided box, but I don't care. Let me just, let me just, see if I can get something happening here. It's not going to move on me. Um, but I'm probably... All right, here we go. This is quite plain on using, so I just want to flatten this out a bit. The shavings are pretty powdery, they're quite nice. It's taken all the lumps and bumps out. Mm. That if we wet that, that's where you're going to see the colour come through. And that that I think is really, really nice. And then we'll square it up. That's going to be. No, there's a chunk out of it or what? No, we'll square it up. <laughs> Things going against the grain, I don't know. It was too. It just didn't sound right. That's better. See, you don't get real long shavings off it. You get real crunchy, crispy bits, and they just crush down to dust. But there you go. Oh, you want to see how it soars? Wait a minute, I'll get a saw. Just went a little offline then. Pretty easily, as you can tell. Oh, where do we go up to? There you go. So that's Jarrah. Um, <laughs> oh dear. I want to do me seven sided box. These are great too. Absolutely, I've forgotten what they're called. Um, 
Exactor, no. New concepts. New concepts, Fretzel. Brilliant. Anthony, Lee Nelson, Australia. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can get him to come on too. He's going to be up here in June, um, going to a mate's workshop and running a, an open day there. So if I can get him to come here and do a stream, it would be awesome. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So, okay, Stephen, I hope that helped you. Uh, you can get all free timbers, I should make <laughs> uh, Can you collect timber from the side of the road? Yeah, if you don't get caught. Tango, I'm there, I'm there. G'day, mate, how are you? Lovely to have you in the shed again. Security plus, Jarrah in Bunnings is only decking. Yeah, but you can take the, the rounded edges off and you'll end up, because most of it, I think, is 75. Oh, no, 90 mil. So you can end up with 70 mil out of it. Uh, Screw plus on a 58 year old car, but I've got my shot. But there's always a bit. Mate, you can't, be, you can't be working and tidy at the same time. I'm very, very suspect of people that are tidy and busy. See? I'll, I'll pick that up later on. The only reason I'm not picking it up now is because my back hurts. I want to make sure it's worth the trip. When I go there, I've got to have half a dozen things to pick up. Uh... Oh, I, I have a look at what I've got. I reckon, yeah, I'm not going to say how much I've got in my sheds, but whew, I could retire. Uh... Hey, Dr. Crazy, lovely to have you on board too. Um, I just did a big jump then. There you go, I'm back here. Here we go. Interesting, Jarrah and Bunnings, beautiful. There you go. Thank you, thank you for pronouncing Wenge correctly. Why do they call it Wengi? <laughs> that sounds like something you get cut off your toe. Oh, there's a big Wengi hanging off your toe. Wenge. It's very close to whinge. And you whinge when you get the price of Wenge. That's not as dear as ebony. I want to know where you are felling trees for timber in Queensland. Well, there you go. It's nice to want to know things. We go out west. In fact, no, to tell you the truth, most of the stuff we get is western New South Wales. Um, yeah, we live in Queensland, but we go to western New South Wales. I got told Wenge is from Africa and they pronounce it Wengi. Yeah, that's it. It doesn't matter. It's that stripy black stuff over there. G'day, David. How are you? Welcome from the UK. Oh, look, you and Rob might be neighbours. You never know. I made the dance floor from TNG to red mahogany. Looks be oh, gorgeous. Morning, James. <clears throat> Today, woodworkers in Gansy environment. <laughs> No, I cut old trees down so new ones can grow, <laughs> if you believe that. No, we actually, we're um, pretty, pretty picky and choosy when we, we get a tree and we just uh, go, oh, well, that's it, we want the top, you know, uh, 10 inches or something or other. We, generally, the whole tree gets used up. And it's beautiful because I've got a documentary there on the channel there, something about timber getting or... Uh, timber bush trip or something and in that I well Theo who you know was out there Terry Gordon is out there uh, Trent from uh, Harold Saxon Chisels there's another woodwork and myself it might have been an instrument maker I'm not sure so between the, the lot of us all the pieces get used and it's not as there I mean the turners all they'll take in here no. <laughs> uh, wood turners they're good because they'll take um, bits of timber that we wouldn't use as woodworkers and instrument makers are looking for particular pieces. Uh, Trent needs small bits for his chisel handles. These things here. Oh dear. There you go. Just a small chisel handle. Yeah, we go this way. There you go. Just like that one there is... Well, there it goes. Ah! That's... Um... Queensland, no, it's not, it's desert rosewood. Hard as. 
fact, that makes Gidgey look like balsa wood. Brilliant stuff. Where do we go? There we go. Um, so yeah, the, the tree gets used and then what we do with the scraps, we bundle them up and leave it by the side of the track so the cocky has got fuel for his um, chip burner or uh, stove or whatever and he hasn't, doesn't have to get timber in winter because we've already stacked it up for him. Uh, I like the mix of Miranda. Yeah, that looks nice. Or Jarrah Jarrah and Oak look nice. Miranda and Oak look nice. Um, you need to update your YouTube with smell of vision Oh, mate, you don't want to. No. It's, that dog is wrong. Yeah, it requires a mess to have a calm mind. That's what I reckon. I'm, I'm anything, any excuse, James, I'm good. Yeah, I know, but the profile of the bottom of the decking has... Uh, oh, okay, yep. Yeah, I, I've noticed that too, Ed. It's funny, you know, when I was young, the ground was very close, but I don't know, between your knee and your ankle, I reckon that stretches because it's... A mate of mine <laughs> once said to me, it was Jeff Hanna one day, I, I was on the bench and I jumped down. I might have been in his workshop. He said, there'll come a time when you won't want to do that. And the other day, I was putting a new clock up, which you know I've got a new digital clock up there now. I was putting a new clock up and I came to jump off the bench and his words revisited me and I went, he's right, you know. Because especially when you've got glasses on, the ground's out of focus. <laughs> ah, I'm also sus of some of those guys with spotless works I work for a living, which is why the mess. Well, there you go. Love the old timbers from 100 years built. Yeah, look, they're great if you can get them. They're dry. They're, they've got character. They've got history. They've got smell. Oh, some of the, the oak that they get out of the old pubs and that with 100 years worth of Guinness in it. Oh, love it. Oh, I do have, actually, I've got a, uh, a furniture polish that reminds me of those. And it's, I forget the measurements, but it's raw linseed oil and Guinness stout. And I, after, I've been, been using it for a while. This is years ago. And then I was using a lot more just raw linseed and <laughs> drinking the stout. But it's all good. All right, let's. Cut this puppy up and we'll see how we go. Hang on, I've just got a beep. What do I get a beep from? Let me just make sure these are all going well and I haven't emptied anything. No, it's all good, all good. Okay. Now this, it's got a bit of a warp in there. Which way do I want to go? Oh, it's got a bit of a bendy in there. A little bit there. We'll go that way. How tall do I want this box to be? Oh. Life, you just got to make decisions all the time. Oh, I don't have to make a decision when I finish streaming. Straight down the road, might get a hamburger and a cup of coffee. Actually, I reckon there looks good. There looks good. What measurement is it? I have no idea. But we will cut it up. I'll move the camera over just as soon as I... Oh, oh, stop it. All right, I'll move the camera over now. Dear, oh dear. Oh, where'd my other camera go? Oh, there it is. I thought I was down the camera there for a minute. My Nikon was missing. Um, what do you want? I've got to change... There you go. I've done it. Now, you don't want me in the corner. Go away. Okay. So, we'll set this up. Oh, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. I hate working the plans. <laughs> I guess you've already figured that out, but working the plans just takes the, the fun out of it out. So that's got a bit of a... 
doesn't matter, it's got a bit of a twist in it, but I just want to do this for, see how it goes, unless, oh, we'll give it a shot. Is a bit. That's a bit annoying. I'm just going to go out to the jointer, and I think I'll just run these. So if I've got enough cable there, I'll take this camera out. Normally you don't machine plywood, but I'm too lazy to go and get some flat stuff. So we'll just oh. And I'll, I'll, I'll shut the door so you don't get that flare. Hey, you've learned the secret. That's right. That's right. I'll keep me. My breakfast bowl. Let me shut this one. There you go. All right. Oh, dear. Through the thickness, sir. And we 
would be good to go. Can't see me because I'm hiding. box it really doesn't make that much difference because you won't have that much pressure and stress on what you're doing anyway and it saves throwing it away and it makes it a little bit thinner all right so now we've got to work out the height and the angle and all that stuff oh For those of you who didn't know how I got that angle, I'll show you again in a tick. I'm just looking down there to see if I've got any light coming through, which obviously if I have, it means it's not right. That's pretty good there. Okay, so now, Got to work out how long we want the sides. Bada boom. Drop this down. I Oh, there's so many different ideas on blade height. Oh, you got to have it higher because it cleans better. No, just, personally, I don't like a lot of blade hanging over the top in the job. Providing there's enough to clear the teeth, I'm happy. Okay, so we've got to cut seven of these. Let's go. Oh, there you go. How many of you noticed that? Hey, who was waiting for the catastrophe? I, I have done it before. There you go, there's a, there's a lesson. There's a lesson for you. Whenever you're using a mitre box and you've changed it, be very mindful you change it back because I had that on a mitre this way and that part of the fence was clear. Now, if I'd pushed that through there, that blade would have gone straight through that fence and I would have copped it from Jeff and Ray for the next millennium. But it's all right, because I sawed it. 
and I, I got, I, I smarted up to it, okay. So you just make sure that that will clear. the blade. But I, I like to have it as close to the blade as possible because that then gives support to the back here. Okay, let's go. This is where your template comes in so handy because now I just put that on there, get a pretzel and mark where that angle comes into that corner there and I just mark that back here and I know if I bring that up That's where that line's got to go. So I'll go over and cut that one shortly. What's happening? Oh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, I'm back on chat. And look, look, it's still got all my fingies. Yeah, look, that, that really, if you've got bent plywood, you can, what I have done in the past, is I'll spray it with water and then put it in a book press. Come back in the day and it's gone flat again. My own fault, because I've got some sheets that I reclaimed that were lining on a wall and I didn't store them flat. I've just propped them up against the wall and it's rained and the sun's come out, so they're a bit dicky, but dropping that over the joint like that, putting it through the thickness, I might, well, let's see how much I lost. That was 12 mil to start with. It is now, 10. I, I like making boxes with 10 mil, so I lost a mil each side, but I've reclaimed a bit of um, timber or plywood that otherwise might have got thrown away. Uh, okay, where are we? Um, Did you play it against the grain on the flats? I don't know. No, I went across the grain. Across the grain when I flattened that board. Um, I'm sorry, I missed that one. Okay, Ed, I was nine, worked 33 years. Of <laughs> Mate, just living takes a toll on your body, I think, doesn't it? JB Overalls, hello, Steve. How are you? A bit late, but what am I building? I think I've told you, a seven-sided box. I notice most remove the guard from the table so I blame New Yankee works. Uh, look, in all honesty, that, I don't know if you noticed, but that's got a riving knife in it. And a lot of the work I do, I can't work with a guide, but I've got a riving knife. The riving knife, let's go back over there. It's that, just behind that furthest bit of timber, you can see a bit of gold sticking up behind the blue saw blade, that's a riving knife. And what it does is when you cut your timber, it keeps it separated. Whereas if you've got timber that's got cranky grain, it's got a twist and you don't have a riving knife, what happens when it goes through, and particularly with the hardwoods, anything over three quarters of an inch, that can come together 
and it can jam on the blade, that's when you get your kickback, which is dangerous. And yes, the other thing is if you don't put your hand over the blade, you won't cut it. That um, gripper that I've got, which I think you can see there, that, yeah, just in the bottom right hand corner, uh, they're great. And if I'm doing a lot of panel work, I'll put the top on. But I don't know, it doesn't, what was his name? I don't know. The guy who did the Yankee Workshop, I, I've never watched much of his, so I'll go back and have a look. Um, Norm, Norm, wasn't it? Norm Abrahams, that's it. Um, I've, got, I've, got, I've got some beautiful old saws up in the classroom that I use. And yeah, well, no one else uses them except for me. And they're, they're a bit scary if you're not used to it. Uh, dear, dear, what a, let's take a moment and talk about safety. Repeated line, new Yankee Workshop. Oh, no seven-sided box. I don't use an overhead guard, but do have a rifle. No, absolutely. Um, if he didn't cut his fingers. Yeah, no one wore safety glasses because he had no choice. <laughs> yeah, your safety glasses, here you go. Would you want to get in with safety glasses? Well, safety glasses and ears in one. Imuffs, check them out. Imuffs.com, I think it is. Oh, no, imuffs.com.au. These are the standard ones, and he's got some G6s. Hey, George, if you're watching, and if you're watching, stop watching and go back to work. But you can order those online. Awesome stuff. Uh... Yeah, uh, true, but even with Dados, well, the writhing knife, it's below the top of the blade, so you can still cut dados. Uh, it's the splitting knife that you've got to get rid of if you want to cut dados, because the splitter actually comes over the top of the blade. That's if you're doing big slabs and stuff like that. <coughs> uh, where are we up? What? Given where you work, Randall, why don't you have a 12-inch blade? I had a beautiful 12-inch blade on my old wood fast. It was a, a 305, which is just over 12 inches, and it was 110 tooth. Oh, geez, it was nice. Yeah, that's what I reckon, right? Just enough to cut the, cut the stuff. <laughs> oh, it is. Well, there you go. Thanks, Ray. Thanks for putting up. Yeah, check um, check it out. He's an Aussie bloke, and he came up. He's a tiler by trade, and he came up with that because most of you people know out there, if you're doing something, you'll have your safety glasses on or your eye muffs, but not both. Particularly if you've got glasses that are a bit heavy in the lugs, when you put your earmuffs on, they hurt. Whereas with that eye muff and earmuff together, and yeah, George found that he was sick and tired of going to the, the um, emergency room and getting bits of tile taken out of his eye all the time because he'd have his earmuffs on with the tile cutter, but he wouldn't have his safety goggles. So there you go. All right, so I've done that. Let's go back over the saw and cut these to length, and we'll come back and we'll... Put one together and see see what it's going to look like. I'm I'm sighted. I am all all sighted. <laughs> oh, some stuff I didn't need just fell on the floor. It'll be right. Okay, and now I'm going to come there. If I go right on the line there, because uh, the blade's tilted, it's going to come in here. So I've got to creep up on it, which I shall do. But what I'm going to do is use the stop here, like 
that. Actually, I might go the other way. If I go down this, yeah, and no, I'll do one like this to get the measurement, and then I'll use the fence, I think, which will most likely be more accurate. So let's just creep up on this. There we go. I think that's going to be pretty close. Little bit too thin. It'll come back, come back a fraction. All right, let's check that. It wouldn't have made any difference because we could just have it that way. Um, well, actually, 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 no, that might be right. Because what I didn't take into account was I measured that as the internal. I wanted it as the external. So... No, we're still we're still in with a chance here. Yeah, what I actually did when I measured that, I marked it, but I marked it as the the internal size. No, the external size I marked as the internal size. So We've got a little bit more to take off. It's all right. It's, you're thinking all the time on your feet, especially when you're doing something new. And, you know, a lot of times, yeah, I'll try something new and it'll end up in the bin. But... That's all right, because I've just found one way that it won't work. Okay. mind that, that's a little bit you go, oh, we'll take a smidgen off famous last words That's good enough for me. Okay. So now I've done that, I don't particularly feel comfortable doing it this way because the blade's pointing towards my fingers, even though I'm safe because I'm behind the guard, I'm here. The worst that can happen is that's going to happen. But if now I've got the right measurement, I can move the fence up and see I don't like when you've got the fence on this side I don't like having this because this part here will actually slip under the gap on the fence whereas if I've got it this side this will run along the fence and that's a lot safer and more accurate so look that's good enough there 
I reckon. Yep. So we'll lock that in place. And up, oh, mind your heads. I'll just throw you over the other side of the saw. Hey, these these webcams are good, aren't they? There you go. I'll go and have a look, see how that looks. Oh, look at that! What an awesome shot. Love it. We'll just knock it down a smidgen. There you go. All right. Get rid of this, because if you're not using it, don't have it on your table. You want as much clear space around your work area as possible. Okay, so that one can go there like that. Can't use this, because it's going to hit that, will it? Whoa! No, it won't. Look at that. We might even be able to use the... Oh, I like it. We can use the gripper on that. Okay, let's go. Seven. Hopefully, they're going to be the same size. Which they are, which is good. Okie dokie. Now, what you can do, um, as I said before, I was going to have a Nobex weekend. It's a bit, it's a bit shabby that one. Let me just give that a quick touch up. No, don't like that one. That one's out. Let me do this one. There we go. That's better. Well, if it's not quite right, you might as well fix it and get it done right properly. Now, where is it? Where's my Nobex? Here we go. To join seven sides, this thing here, free plug, no, I'm not getting paid for them. Oh, look, honestly, I really do take exception to the fact you meant to have disclaimers and all that rubbish. What I do is should be my own flipping business. And those, those of you that know me well enough know that I don't do ca cash for comments. And if it's rubbish, I won't promote it. And if it is any good, I'll have it in my workshop and I will use it. But anyway... Not here nor there. So you've got, how many do we need? We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and you just plonk these on here like this. I think you can get up to 10 um, in a kit, I, I'm not sure. I've got two because I've got one up in another workshop that I let students use. So I sometimes rob them. Okay, so here we go. Spread these out, have them all facing inward. Yeah. And we just position them. I'm not going to glue this because actually this has worked out fairly well. So I'm going to veneer these pieces. If it hadn't worked out, I would recut them, but I can use these. So imagine that I've glued it. And again, I've never done a seven-sided box. It really is quite interesting. Then you align each of these black things to where there's a join. And then you simply knock them all over. Pull them tight. Oh, wait a minute. We will do it. I, I can tell you what though, I can feel a coffee coming on. What's the time? Oh, it must be close to coffee time. Okay. All right, and then we line these up best we can. I'll show you another way you can do it in a minute too. If you don't want to go to this <laughs> trouble. But honestly, if you're going to get into weird shape stuff and big sizes, I found nothing that can do it as well in, in the bigger sizes. I'll show you something we can use on the smaller sizes in a, in a tick. Okay, so you've got to get even pressure all the way around. Whoops, what's going on here? Okay, now we've got that there. It's a question of preloading this. There you have it. Done. Isn't that a great system? I think it's absolutely amazing. And you can put so much pressure on it. Where's the perspex? We'll see how we're going. It's a little bit bigger than I thought, but that'll do. It doesn't matter. 
So that's a seven-sided box. And I'm having an absolute ball doing it. And another thing you can do, if you don't want to go to that extent, um, I, I look, I recommend these. I think they're great, especially for big, big jobs. I uh, have tried doing six-sided picture frames. There's no way in the world you can clamp a hexagon if it's that big. It's just, it's a nightmare. That you can use to do it. The other thing, if you're just using small boxes, just use rubber bands. That's the other thing. So you join them together. So half of them, if you've got six, it's three and three. This is seven, so I've got four and three. So I've got four, the point coming up that way, and three down there. Hold them together like that. Rubber band. And then you just pull it into shape. Move it down a bit. Get it about in the middle. You've got to be pretty quick, if you, especially if you're gluing, because the glue can go off. But it's just, it's a bit like a Chinese puzzle. Um, you just got to find out the best way of doing it. <laughs> Believe me, I'm finding that seven sides <laughs> is a bit harder to do than six sides, but quite doable. You just got to play around until you get all the sides lined up. Squeeze them into place. There you go. This isn't as rigid as the Nobeck system, but it will work. All right. Oh, almost time for lunch. You're right. You're right. I just looked at the clock. Oh, I can feel a coffee coming on. Um, next up is some Steve melting plastic. Oh, how far back do I have to go? Oh, the blue circle, someone will tell you. It means your members in the chat. That's it. Oh, thanks, Roy. G'day mate, how are you? I hope you got over the, the um, what was it, pneumonia you thought you had? Oh, that's horrible stuff. Oh, okay, let me see if I can. That's where I was up to. Always do a dry run first on tubs, absolutely. Um, Stall had himself a close call, when was that? Oh, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, at least I'm a master of something, Ray, appreciate that. Oh, dear, if you keep this up, the paramedics will be having, oh, okay, is that where we got that from? Okay, I must, I've got that far, I've got that far. What are the blue circles? That's if you remember, yeah, so if you like what you see and you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. <sighs> and uh, the notification so you know when I stream. Also, if you want to be a part of the Woodworking Masterclass, you hit the join button and that gets you becoming a member of the Woodworking Masterclass channel. With that, you do get extras that you don't get on the stream. For example, I, I don't know if you noticed, members, but I've uploaded the link to those free downloads of uh, Mike Davies, all the, the carving templates. There's 15 lessons up there on it. I think there could be uh, 12 or 13 actual projects from Lunettes to, uh, -da -ba -dum, what are those, Acanthus Leaves, uh, Barley Twist, um, Oh, pa uh, Patras, how to sharpen your chisels, different ways and techniques of using your chisels. So that link's up there. If you remember, check it out. Click on that. They're all downloadable, PDFs, and it's free. Uh, there's extra videos I put up. There's a couple of bloopers I've got to put up from two videos ago because I've been busy and I'm catching up. I've got maybe half a dozen videos to put up, and there's a couple there purely for the members. And what I'm doing is I'm building a a knowledge bank. So if members ask for, a, uh, have a question or a query, 
ask me and then I do my best to make a video to show you how to overcome that particular challenge you're facing or how to solve a problem. And that gets posted onto the Woodworking Masterclass Members Community Board. So it's a knowledge bank there that everyone can refer to, members can refer to over time if you get stuck. You get the longer versions of videos, I'll put some videos up on YouTube that'll show you how I do something, but then sometimes I put an extended version onto the members channel that's got a lot more information of measurements and different ways you can do it. So it's worth it, well I think it is, and it helps me continue to do what I do, which I really appreciate. And I think YouTube charge about five bucks a month. What, what I was going to do was run woodworking masterclass classes online and they were going to be a lot more expensive than five bucks a month. They were going to be around anywhere from $200 to $500 a month. But then I saw what YouTube were doing and the amount it was going to cost me to set up the classroom and everything else and marketing, I figured it was much better to go for $5 a month and I'll, you know, um, put extra stuff in there that people can benefit from and I'll get more people. So there you go. Um, 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 um. What else was, was there? Yeah, so that's it. That's the plug. That's the plug for the channel. I'm lousy at plugging channels, but I really, I want to grow it. And I, if you know anyone that's on Twitch that doesn't know I'm doing YouTube, please, if you can tell them, get them over, that'd be great. Where are we up to in the chat? Oh dear, oh dear. Um, ba -dee -dee -dee. G'day Roy, saw you, that's good, I'm back. What are the blue circles? You've answered that one. Um, uh, I had a blade I bought when the hardware store closed and it had a one inch bore and the saw Dr. Machine did that to 30 in, 30 mil. Mate, you're working in a tool shop. What are you going to the hardware shops for? <laughs> uh, to be honest, oh, I shouldn't have bought the table saw. It had no break either, so could take five minutes to stop. Um, yeah, that's a downside, I suppose. I like the electric brakes. Don't start me on saw stop. Next. Um, did did it? Let me hang on. Let me have a look. I'll go and check the video, but I'm having a look here, and I can't see any marks there. I have, I have in the past. I have in the past. Yeah, I've got a chunk out there and one there and a um, bit of whatever's. But anyway, yeah, no. I initially I didn't like them um, because I used to have the saw guard on all the time and I'd use push sticks. But I must admit, after a couple of years, yeah, they're quite handy. I've got another one which should be out there on the jointer. But if you notice when I was joining, I never ran my hand over the blade. I'd push it and then you'd see my fingers arch and you also saw me wetting my fingers, which gives me friction. So there you go. Uh, oh, my worst one, James, is a spindle moulder. That still gives me the heebie-jeebies. Not a fan of the spindle moulder. What were you looking up there, art and framing? Oh, is that the, uh, yeah, the Nobex. Thank you, Ray. Although, hey, Randall, any tool's good to use, but boy, you've got to respect them, because they don't care. Mm, um, yeah, I don't know, Randall. I don't know if I'm going to spline them or not. I, I'll most likely, I don't know. If I use high glue, I'll most likely spline them. If I use a PVA, I'll most likely won't. But I don't know, that's, that's down the track. I'll look at that one. Um. Yeah, I've seen, I've never used the masking tape one, Rob. I've seen it a lot of times and a couple of my friends use it, but quite honestly, I think 
Elastic band, boom, boom, boom. Um, I've got bench dogs here too, and sometimes I stretch it around the bench dog and then just put the bits in and take the rubber band off the bench dog, and that works quite well. These, by the way, that I use are 105s, 107s, and 109s. That's a 107, that's a 105, and oh, oh. And I keep them in the fridge because they last longer. Okay, so that's a 109. That's a 107. That's a 105. If you want to have a look at the, the side view of them. So the little one's a 105. Next one's a 107 or 109. And you can buy them from um, office workshops, stationery supplies. If they haven't got them, they're most likely to get them in for you. Are you going to get out of bed and make a coin? Good on you, Rob. Well, I tell you what, I've just looked at me new clock. I'm going to do that too. The Lexus, get a back at you, mate. Um. Oh, thanks, Roy. Did, mate. I'll just put you on commission. Roy is the new agent for Woodworking Masterclass. Thanks, mate. No, Roy's been with me for a long time. Um, subscribe back when I... I don't even think I was in the 10,000s and Roy subscribed. So I appreciate your loyalty and, and uh, your support, mate. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very interested in joining, but I'm already supporting artists on Patreon. I would have this week talk about why. I used to be on Patreon, and nothing wrong with Patreon at all. But again, it's another platform you have to manage. And literally, I'm a one man, one dog show. So I do all the editing, all the filming, <laughs> tied in the workshop up occasionally. And then I do all the posting and the editing. And I just found I had to pick one social media that would work for me. And it's YouTube now, especially since they've got that membership channel thing. I, I use Facebook uh, as a feeder. I use Twitter sometimes. And what's the other one? Facebook, Twitter. Oh, Instagram. Instagram. But my main focus now is YouTube. Because I, I found with, with Patreon, and no disrespect to the, the wonderful people that supported me on Patreon, I had some people there and... For the amount of effort I had to put in to keep them happy, yeah, for a dollar, no, it wasn't worth it. So, um, yeah, that's why I've just pulled it all down to, to YouTube now. Um, ah, oh, no, not good, Rob. Uh, actually, yeah, look, I'll do one one day of matching the grain. You know when you make a square box, you can get three sides that match? And the fourth side's always a little bit out because it's one end meeting the other end of the board. I'll show you a great way of almost perfectly matching the grain. But that'll be on a later one. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. My job on today is to get my mobile base assembled. <laughs> Go to Gregory's, mate, and buy one. <laughs> no, it's not book match. Oh, well, it is book match. Um... Yeah, I suppose you're right. But I'll, I've, I've got to play with it myself. I haven't done it for ages. But it really is good. So anyway, that's it for me. So we've got the seven-sided box, or six-and-a-half-sided box. I will work during the week on getting the rest of that done to lay it in. I'll most likely stream again during the week. Definitely if Christian's here tomorrow from Australian Japanese, Japanese Hills, Australia, I will do a stream with him. Don't know how long it'll be, but it'll most likely be in the morning. Um, I quite enjoy doing the evening ones that I did last week, so I'll do those. Again, if you've got any queries, questions, or things you'd like to say, chuck us an email, admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, or just drop me a message on YouTube. Look forward to your comments. 
and look forward to having you again. So that's it. This is Steve pulling the shed door down saying thanks very much for your company. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the mods that are on. Thanks for the people that joined in the chat room. And there were a lot of you today. So congratulations. I'm really pleased about that. And for these, those of you that are lurking, please feel free to jump in the chat room. We're a friendly bunch. Only here to help. And um, if anyone makes fun of anyone, it's me making fun of me or whoever in the chat room making fun of me. It's okay, I've broad shoulders, I can handle it. So please, next time, join in and say good day. But in the meantime, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, take your glasses off. Keep it safe, look after yourself, be kind to each other, and I look forward to having you in the workshop, at the workbench again very, very soon. Till then, good night, good morning, good afternoon, God bless, catch you later. Bye for now. Thank you.